Welcome to PC Wits Kids Tech Talk. Today I wanted to show you AMD's Phenom 2 X4 965 Black Edition AM3 CPU. This one here that I'm looking at today is clocked at a default 3.4 GHz, but it is unlocked so you can increase the multiplier for example and overclock this further. Now it is a 140 watt CPU so it is quite hot and try to keep it below 62 degrees Celsius. Has 6 megs of level 3 cache which is terrific. And uh, being an AM3 socket CPU, it will fit in an AM2 Plus, so check your motherboard manufacturer and the, see if it's got a BIOS update for it. It will support DDR2 naturally as well as DDR3, okay, so that's great. But today in my test system, I will be using DDR3 from Patriot, the G Series Black Edition, as well as an Asus motherboard. I definitely recommend Asus, great boards, as well as Diamond HD 4890 overclocked card, terrific card and some other decent components as you can see. Now, going through Windows 7 here, running CPU-Z, you can see the stats on it, the code name, the Deneb Core, you can see 1.36 volts is the default voltage, you can see the clock speeds, nothing has been overclocked here, nothing has been touched yet, okay? This is just inserted, installed, as is, running as you can see it, okay? So we're gonna run benchmarks based on these settings that you're looking at right now. It runs cool at about 35 degrees Celsius on idle and about 50 to 55 degrees uh, full load. A bit toasty. If you have water cooling, then that's great. You can overclock this like crazy. Now, here's my memory settings, the timings. I did modify them slightly to 999.24 from what you see there, but I did not really touch too much the video card. Just uh, left it at the um, overclock settings that it came with. Now, looking at CPU scores, because we're not really testing the GPU today, but the CPU, um, where does this CPU lie compared to other CPUs? Where does it fall under, right, when we're looking at it at default clock settings? So, in 3D Vantage, for example, if we look at the uh, CPU score of 11376 and compare that to other results that I've gotten on other systems, other CPUs, this is where this CPU lies Halfway in between, you can see here, uh, between other CPUs that have been overclocked and not overclocked, it's right down the middle. But if I overclock at the 3.7 gigahertz, it will beat all of them, of course, including some Intel quad cores as well. So it's great for the price, considering that uh, an Intel Core 2 Quad 9650 costs about $70 more right now at the time of this video. Now looking at some synthetic benchmarks, because I didn't want to double check and see what other benchmarks had to say. When I compared it against these other Intel quad cores, it did beat all of these in the combined results. Okay, so again, this AMD CPU did follow through and did beat all of these, as you can see. So not bad at all, not bad at all with those results. And uh, I also ran the uh, Everest tests as well. I wanted to see what Everest had to say. And uh, the Everest benchmarks also um, proved that it does come very, very close to... Uh, um, the uh, Intel Core 2 Quad 9650 uh, and the synthetic benchmark, so not too bad. Definitely faster than an, than a Phenom uh, 2940. Okay. Now, when overclocking this time around, I decided to use the AMD's overdrive utility, not through the BIOS. I thought I'd give it a try here again and um, increase the uh, multiplier there from 17 to 18, and then increase the uh, HT reference clock from 200 to about 213, maybe somewhere on there, 211, 213. 212, 213, and then of course, um, to get that 3.8 gigahertz stable, you gotta increase the voltage a little bit, all right? So I increase it to maybe 1.46, 1.48, something like that, and then um, run the stability, the benchmarks, the torture tests, and see if uh, basically if it freezes on me or not, right? So you just have to keep going back and forth until you get it to, uh, to be stable and it doesn't hang. So, um, not bad at all, right, for overclocking. I didn't reach 4 gigahertz. I didn't have water cooling. But if you do have water cooling, then that's great. You could bring these temperatures down because, like I said, it does get quite uh, hot. It will uh, go to um, the mid-50s, right, if I run it on, on full load. Now, here we got the uh, game benchmarks. And these are the settings that I'm using for the game benchmarks if you're interested. Okay. And um, I ran it against a couple of games different games starting with stalker clear sky and you can see the max min and average frames per second at uh, 1280 by 1024 but I also ran it at um, 
1680 by 1050 and these are the results for that okay so you can see here the different frames per second on different uh, ultra high settings uh, and different resolutions everything is on DirectX 10 by the way Bioshock again here some very super fast frames per second of course it's a slightly older game but uh, just to give you an idea how well this performs on um, everything maxed out terrific crisis again enthusiast super high settings on that one as well you can see the results here on that on both resolutions okay grid racing also with the anti-aliasing uh, up high to eight maxed high you can see there very very uh, terrific uh, results on this one as well nothing is being bottlenecked here and uh, Far Cry 2 benchmarks I also ran some of those with some mixed settings to see what uh, what we get from that and it also did a very very decent job as well so again you're saving money from the uh, next uh, closest thing from Intel ranging from anywhere from 50 bucks to maybe up to hundred dollars depending on the different uh, uh, CPU that you're comparing this against from Intel so very very nice results especially if you're overclocking this to 3.8 gigahertz terrific and I definitely recommend this so I like to thank AMD for providing it and I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching